It's 12 o'clock. Thank you for joining us at this time. You're watching News Analysis live on Politics and Business TV. The top stories. President Bola Tinubu calls on the economic community of West African states to strengthen ties and reject forces bent on causing division within the community. Inspector General of Police IGP Kayode Egbetokun approves promotion of 10,581 officers. Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP, kick against increment of electricity tariff by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission. Details coming up shortly. Welcome back. I am Omo Ife Peace Osemere. Now, President Bola Tinubu has called on the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, uh, member states, to come together, strengthen ties, and reject forces bent on causing division within the community. According to a statement issued by his special advisor on media and publicity, Ajuri Ngelali said, Tinubu made the call while speaking at the inauguration of the sixth legislature of the ECOWAS parliament. Tinubu, who is the chairman of ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government, said regional solidarity was imperative to strengthen the bloc's resilience and effectiveness at this critical juncture, while emphasizing that member states could not afford to remain passive spectators amid threats of disintegration. Tinubu reaffirmed Nigeria's unwavering commitment to their aspirations of the community and, by extension, the fundamental objectives upon which ECOWAS Parliament was established. Now the Inspector General of Police, IGP Kayodeg Batokuns, uh, says uh, the police has in the last eight weeks recorded 537 murder cases. The IGP who described the trend as worrying also said the police recorded 141 cases of terrorism, secessionist attacks, 26 cases of armed robbery, 214 cases of kidnapping and 39 cases of unlawful possession of firearms. According to media reports, Egbetokun spoke at a strategic meeting with zonal AIGs and state command police commissioners at force headquarters, where he equally disclosed about nine suspects who were directly involved in the killing of six police officers in the forest at Ohoro in Ugele local government area of Delta State, have been apprehended and were currently assisting in unraveling the circumstances surrounding the unfortunate incident. Egbetokun emphasized that policing in Nigeria was an end of all fraught with complexities and obstacles ranging from insurgent activities and armed banditry to varying other criminal syndicates and communal clashes. In a related development, the Inspector General of Police, IGP Kaido Egbetokun, has authorized the promotion of 10,581 deserving junior officers of the Inspectorate cadre and the rank and file. The first public relations officer, ACP Olumiyiwa Adejubi, who made this known, added that 9,831 police constables are to be promoted to the rank of corporal. 81 uh, coppers to be promoted to the rank of sergeant and 669 officers set to progress from the rank of sergeant to inspectors. Consequently, the Deputy Inspector General of Police, DIG, overseeing the Department of Finance and Administration, DIG Bala Chiroma, has been tasked with coordinating efforts alongside the Commissioner of Police Welfare to commence the promotion process. It said the IGP, in approving the promotions, reiterated the zeal of the force leadership to foster a culture of meritocracy and career advancement. He further emphasized the pivotal role of timely promotions in boosting the morale of officers and bolstering the overall effectiveness of the force in the fight against insecurity. In other news, the coalition of United Political Parties, CPP, has tongue-lashed the federal government over the increment of electricity tariff by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission. It would be recorded by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, had on Wednesday increased the electricity tariff paid by Band A customers from 68 naira per kilowatt per hour to 225 naira per kilowatt per hour. 
But the CPP, in a statement signed and issued to politics and business TV news by its general secretary, Ahmed Peter Yakubu, said the hike in electricity tariff would further push Nigerians into multi dimensional poverty. The coalition stressed that the effect of a 240% tariff increase on Band A customers will negatively impact the manufacturing sector and also trigger the inflation rate. Similarly, the Northern Elders Forum, NEV, has expressed concern and disappointment on the recent decision by President Bola Tinubu's government over the increase in electricity tariff. According to media reports, it described the hike as a reckless move and a complete disregard for the well-being and welfare of the Nigerian people. In a statement by its Director of Publicity and Advocacy, Abdul Aziz Suleiman, the group said it recognizes that this drastic increase in electricity tariffs will have a significant negative impact on the already struggling population, further exacerbating the gap between the rich and the poor. The forum said the breakdown of the new tariffs revealed an alarming burden that the average Nigerian will face in affording electricity on a daily basis. Right, you're watching news analysis live on politics and business TV still to come. With no end in sight to the crisis rocking the Liberal Party, events took another dimension on Wednesday with an alleged attack on the Abuja residence of the national chairman of the party, Julius Abure. A major question now would be whether or not the Liberal Party has lost its steam. A Liberal Party chieftain, engineer Dr. Osereme Christian Omofuma, joins me in a moment to discuss the turn of events in the Liberal Party and the way forward. Details coming up shortly. Welcome back from that break. If you are just joining us, this is News Analysis Live on Politics and Business TV. A controversial cross-dresser, Idris Okuneye, popularly known as Bob Risky, has arrived at the Federal High Court in Lagos for his arraignment on money laundering and Naira abuse allegation. According to media reports, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission had on Thursday filed six counts of bordering on money laundering and abuse of the Naira against Bob Risky. The crossdresser, who has reportedly been in the EFCC detention since Wednesday night for failure to meet the administrative bill offered him on Thursday, is scheduled to take his plea before the vacation judge, Justice Abimbola Awoboro. Now let's talk party politics. With no end in sight to the crisis rocking the Liberal Party, events took another dimension on Wednesday with an alleged attack on the Abuja residence of the national chairman of the party, Julius Abure, National Publicity Secretary of the party. Obiora Ifo, in a statement in Abuja, alleged that Abure escaped an assassination attempt at his residence. Earlier, the party's 2023 presidential candidate, Peter Obi, had threatened to dump the party ahead of a 2027 general election following the ongoing crisis. Obi said he will not die while trying to change the party, hence his decision to leave if the party's crisis cannot be resolved. The Liberal Party has been involved in a leadership crisis lately with the Nigerian Liberal Congress, NLC, claiming ownership of the party. Consequently, six lawmakers elected under the party in Enugu had pitched tent with the People's Democratic Party. But amid the crisis rocking the party, Abure was reportedly re-elected in a controversial national convention organized in Anambra State vis-a-vis -vis issues rocking the Liberal Party uh, this afternoon on News Analysis. I have my guest right here in the studios who is a Liberal Party chieftain, engineer Dr. Osara McChristian and Mofoma. Good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Right. The last time, I mean, you were on this program, I mean, that was uh, before the national, the secret you know, uh, national uh, convention, yes, and you were optimistic that would, uh, you know, progression of events, that convention will not hold. But here we are. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, uh, the convention held, you know, but the, the thing is, you know, a convention is supposed to, to not be hidden. 
and here we were having a secret convention. So what was going on, a lot of petitions were written, people complained, uh, party leaders boycotted the convention, and um, at the end of the day, uh, here we are. So the tussle continues, and it's a shame, I want to say it's a shame, because uh, this, is a, a, a very, this was a very small party, and uh, here obedience came in, um, Peter Opie came in, and obedience followed suits. And the party became something else. You know, it's like uh, moving into a neighborhood where you have only one boys' quarter, and all of a sudden you have made that neighborhood into a town of six million homes. And um, you know, I, I believe when that happens, you have a say. Automatically, you have a say what happens in that neighborhood. Okay. Before we even talk about, you know, the role um, Peter Obi has played so yeah. far with regards to the party, you know, um, the crisis rocking the party. Now, another question would be whether or not the NLC, I mean, NLC has been claiming ownership of the party, but for Abure, Julius Abure to go ahead with the secret national convention, further flouting, you know, the stance of INEC that, no, you're yet to meet, you know, the, the, the necessary, you know, standard or requirements to even have, you know, a national convention. Isn't that a pointer to the fact that the NLC does not have any stronghold on the party? NLC doesn't have a stronghold on the party. Well, it is claiming ownership of yes, the party. Yes, NLC registered the party, but NLC, NLC has its representative in the party. You know, in the person of the deputy national chairman, uh, Lady Lea, and uh, as uh, Laura Femi, who was also a deputy national chairman, two deputy national chairmen, you know, who are from NLC and the TUC. You know, they are part of the running, day-to-day uh, -day running of the party, in which are, they are members of the NWC, National Working Committee, Committee yeah. of the party. And so that has as much uh, influence as they exert on the running of the party. Now, they were forced to come in because of the endless, seemingly endless troubles, you know, bedeviling the party, you know, almost on a weekly basis, there's something new. Uh, and uh, it, it became imperative that stakeholders uh, from all walks of life who start asking what is going on, you know, and it's only NLC, CUC is there, other stakeholders. Now, the Board of Trustees, which has been silent almost like they were not there, you know, has stepped up and said, uh, no, that convention cannot stand. You know, in fact, they, 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 they want to, they're thinking about bringing in a new um, a kind of congregation of stakeholders to manage the day-to-day -day affairs of the party and plan a proper convention and a proper transition. Okay. Yeah. But are there takeaways you'd like to share with us? I mean, from the secret national convention, which you know held in Anambra State. Um, I wasn't there. You did there. not monitor. No, I wasn't there. You didn't there. even get feedback. I wasn't there, and yeah. uh, cameras were not even allowed into the place. News media were not allowed into the place. That's why you don't you don't have it to know in the, the major news outlet. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, national convention uh, where. You didn't allow a uh, news media in there. You know that's that tells you a lot. You know, and um, so there isn't much I could say except that people went there and got themselves re-elected. And they want to continue running the party in this fashion, which we all have seen. This video has no results. It cost us a lot of votes. It cost us. It's still costing us a lot of members. You know, people are. You know, the, the, we're supposed to have a surging that uh, more and more people, especially with the current situation in Nigeria, seeking refuge in the Labour Party and saying, hey, you guys try to change the status quo and all that, you know, but you know, instead we reverse is the case. Well, let me ask you this. Do you regret pitching your tent, you know, pitching tent with the Labour Party? <laughs> I don't regret pitching my tent with the Labour Party yeah, because um, well, what is the alternative? You know, before you start regretting it, you look at what is the alternative, what choices do you have? You know, it, it, the party is like any other 
organization, you know, you can join an organization and if you look at it from outside, oh, this house is beautiful, this organization is beautiful. But when getting in there, you see that, oh my God, there are problems. You know, all these problems can be solved. You know, like in the last interview, we I told you guys, it's a question of leadership. It's a question of leadership. The same problems between Labour Party is what is what's happening in Nigeria. Okay. We can solve these problems. Just just for us to sit down and say, okay, hey, what is the problem? Where is it coming from? You know, how do we tackle this? If people decide to reason together unselfishly, you know, look at the problem to what it is, you know, and let us tackle it head on. You know, it's not a question of people thinking, hey, we've been here before, we were here, the party is big now, somebody's right. trying to push me away, mm -hmm. somebody's saying, no, go relax. No. Are you capable? Are you able to do the work? Right? You you may have employed as say a, a cleaning organization, a small organization. Now you are in a, a high rise, you are in a much uh, sorry, a, a, a high rise building with fifty floors, you know. We were used to cleaning just one floor. Now we have 50 floors and people are saying, hey, we want to bring in industrial cleaners, you know, people who have equipment, who have machinery, you know, to take off 50 floors. And you are saying, we have been here 20 years. I have been cleaning this floor 20 years, you know. But now you cannot clean 50 floors. No, but you know, the, the, yeah. the, the, the submission, I mean, your, your, your submission right now uh, yeah. with regards to all that has been going on, you know, in the Labour Party, will it be intelligent to say that it only goes to show that, I mean, the leadership, I mean, the foundation is already faulty. And perhaps those who came together to even, you know, register and, you know, um, put up a party called Labour Party, like, they, they, they don't have, uh, their thought patterns are quite, you know, different. No, that, that's not the case. The foundation is not the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a good if thing. If the foundation is not the problem, how did Julius Abure become the, 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 the party uh, uh, national chairman? I'll just give you an example now, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Time changes. Time changes people, time changes things, you know, and with time, Labour Party has evolved. Labour Party of 2021, Labour Party of February, March 2022, it's not the Labour Party of today. Mm. It's a whole different thing, a ball game entirely. And so, yes, the people might have run it in a particular way, proud to uh, the obedience coming in, people are coming in to the party. And, but now the party is a very big party. You know, and we are trying to say, hey, with this vehicle, let us see how we can create hope for the future generation, how we can create a better Nigeria for all of us. That is why all of us came into the party. We were not looking for parties to join. You know, most of us came in because of Peter Obi. Most of us came in because of what he represented, what he stood for, mm -hmm. what he said he would do for Nigeria, for the youths, for the people of this country. That is why we came in. You know, we all always knew the Labour Party was there. We were not interested. You know, but because the leader has said, fine, this is the vehicle we want to use to achieve our goals. This is where we're going to. And to also change the narrative. And, ch and change the narrative. Right. You know, so we say, okay, fine, let us all come into this vehicle. Let's support you and see what we can do. Right? And we have put six million cracks in that glass ceiling. No, but let, let me ask you this. I mean, there have been allegations of financial impropriety. Does it mean that the party actually, you know, recorded some uh, financial gains so much that monies are now, you know, diverted or, you know, <coughs> misappropriated of course with the number of people that came into the party mm -hmm. and all that yeah there are they, 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 they lots of financial gains you know they, but again you know a lot of these were not accounted for so to speak and there were allegations like you actually said yes. yeah some alleging 3.5 billion naira is missing some are saying no it's 1.6 billion that came and we have accounted for it you know and all that it's uh, semantics so I, People should learn to do the right thing, you know. Let us look at what the problem is holistically. Okay. And there are people who can do this. I mentioned in the last uh, discussions we had, there are yeah. forensic auditors who can come in and look at inflows, outflows, and every outflows where they go to it. This, this, this is easy to do. You know, the, it's not a question of accusation, counter accusations. It's easy to do. You know, that can be taken care of easily. You know, yes, money came in just like any system that becomes big. You know, but it, it doesn't give room to people to uh, 
mismanage or turn into their personal funds or personal property? You know, a number of Nigerians, uh, they've they see Labour Party, let me put it that way, as a third force that is here to change the narrative, you know, in terms of fighting corruption and, you know, other anomalies in our, you know, um, society. I mean, from insecurity to the economic, you know, issues that we have, I mean, presently on ground to deal with. But before we talk about the carry on of Peter Obi, whom a number of people see to be a messiah, for you, you joined the Labour Party specifically because of Peter Obi, because you saw him as, you know, a, 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 a promising, you know, um, a charismatic a leader, leader, right, but yeah. can the alleged attack on Abure's residence, you know, be seen as a deliberate plot by the NLC to oust Abure from the party? Uh, I don't know, commensurate with him for the uh, property loss, uh, but uh, I don't see any reason why any, any and also we have to go tag the residents. Now, I asked you this question because yeah. you know, of course, the NLC actually, you know, stormed the, the party secretariat, you know. When NLC came to the party secretariat, yeah. they didn't go there to disrupt or destroy things. They didn't do that. They came to register uh, their displeasure. The grievances. The grievances. With placards. Yeah, with And placards. descriptions, you yeah, know, it's, it's depicting different. that Abure is a thief. Abure must leave and all of that. Yeah, Abure and must then, leave but not, yes. not trying to assassinate after, Abure or not born Abure. Shortly house. after yeah. his house was allegedly attacked. What do you make of all of this? Yeah, it's been a three weeks difference, I, uh, I think, you know. Um, we heard from uh, the party publicity secretary Bureau uh, that uh, the house was uh, allegedly attacked, and, and we commiserate with him. But I don't think uh, I'm not here to defend NLC. Mm -hmm. I'm not a part of NLC. Uh, I'm not being a part of NLC. Uh, but but you work hand in hand. I don't. We we don't work hand in hand. NLC is just a a, subs a, a part of Labour Party. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just like TUC is a part of Labour Party. Yeah, you know, that, you know, but so it makes you all one family. What are you like? It's, it it's, it's one family. Mm. It's one family, and because it's one family, we're not we're not in the business of trying to assassinate each other or burn down or uh, each other's properties and all that. You know, if we have grievances. We register it. You know, through you can register through this means the media, or you go carry placards like the NLC did. Mm. Uh, yeah, but you you don't hear of. Uh, this kind of thing is happening within the party, you know, so yeah, that's not the way. So maybe something else, uh, I think the police should do a proper investigation. But do you think that was a distraction? Uh, I, I don't know, it, it was an attack on uh, somebody's life and property is something serious. Uh, yes, it might be a distraction uh, because there are a lot of issues on ground. You know. Uh, that's why again I say NLC we don't want to put such hands, a thing, yeah, yeah, to create a distraction. But there are serious issues we are looking at now. You know, the party is almost in disarray. The party is, is um, I say to speak, not as strong as we would expect it to be. You know, because again of the leadership crisis we have, and uh, so people are focused on how to fix the party. Mm. and how to create a better leadership for the party. And if this vehicle, the Labour Party, will be viable for us to use in 2027, then it has to be strengthened. It has to be strengthened, it has to be made better, it has to be made, uh, it needs an engine overhaul, you know, so that we can actually become, one, a third force now, um, a viable opposition, a third force, and a party to reckon with. But you know, one would begin to wonder where, you know, the crisis rocking the party, I mean, where does it place the Labour Party um, in, in, in the committee of opposition political parties in the country? You see, what's happening in the party, I would say, is actually a shame that when the news every day goes, uh, one funny story or the other, you know, this shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, and it's affecting all of us, and we just want it to end. You know, we want the party stakeholders to come together, just like the board of trustees is saying, let's come together, let's forge a way forward. If we have to do congresses, you know, to elect people, let's do that. You know, then before we move to a national convention, whatever is necessary, 
you know, to strengthen the party, let us do it. We are not saying throw away everybody that was there before. We are not saying remove everybody. There are, there are areas in this country where the local schools, like border schools, state schools, the LGA schools, they are strong. You know, there are areas where you have a, within a, an LGA as a school, for example, you have some strong people. You have some uh, people who kind of set you back, who are not as strong. Mm. You know, we are saying, let us look at what we have. And places where we need changes, the, the changes can be made. Okay, so yeah. l l let's not talk about the role Peter Obi has played so far. I mean, with regards to the crisis rocking the party, would you say he has done enough? And then coming out to even threaten, I mean, to dump the party if these issues persist? Yes, I see Peter Obi is the leader of the party, is the number one leader of the party. And um, for me, I. I well, he has done what I think he he, 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 he could do, you know. But uh, I I would I would go further anyways. Uh, you know, we all have our real leadership style. Uh, I would go further. I would be more involved. I would be more um, emphatic. And, you know. I know he is kind of reserved. He, he, he I believe he believes. I don't know this for for sure. I mean, he feels you know he has come into this party right. And then they, he, he shouldn't be the one, you know, pushing people away that were them into this party. And so, yeah, and so it is a question of uh, uh, morality, you know, conscience. You know. So he, I'm sure he's probably looking at all those. But someone like me, yes, you look at all those too, you know, but again, okay, fine. Like I said, you know, we we'll look at what we have, where are we? You know, who can stay, who can go? Let the people decide. Let there be proper congresses. Let there be proper national conventions. Dr. Sarah, I'm sorry to about you, but yeah. they say charity, you know, begins at home. But it shouldn't end there, right? I mean, I'm sure you heard that before. <laughs> A number of Nigerians who have been, you know, tongue lashing uh, Peter Obia saying that you actually wanted to be the president of you know, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And within your party, you're having issues, you're having crisis. I mean, and the next thing that comes to mind is to dump the party if the issues persist. Then how were you, I mean, going to address the hand or truckload of issues bedeviling the country from economy to security to politics to agriculture, education, health, and, you know? He, 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 yes, charity begins at home, you know. He has intervened on right. several fronts, on several levels, you know. He has intervened, no doubt, and uh, he has done quite a lot. Uh, but um, you, you see, there, there are, sometimes there are people you cannot reason with. Sometimes there are people who are hell bent on doing what they want to do. It doesn't matter how reasonable you are. It doesn't matter how much convincing you are, how much of an orator you are. What you do doesn't even matter. They are hell bent on doing what they want to do, and they'll do it. You know, so. Yeah, he has tried. He has done uh, much, you know. But I like, like, I'm. What I'm saying is, um, you know, he, I don't think he's leaving the party. Okay. He's only saying that um, as look, we must not. This is not a hill we are ready to die on. Okay. You know, if if these people are these recalcitrants, if they don't want to change. You can force a horse to the river, you can't force the horse to drink. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, to wrap up the conversation now, because time is not our friend, I need a yes or no response again, just to you know reaffirm. Do you regret pitching tent with the Labour Party? In a yes or no response? No, I don't. Right, thank you so much. Uh, I'm afraid we just have to leave the conversation here. I've been speaking with the Labour Party chieftain, engineer Dr. Sarah McChristian or more for my discussing, you know, the crisis rocking the Labour Party, but I'm afraid that's just about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I am Omoyfi Piso Semere. I'll be back at the top of the hour with the news update. Good afternoon.